Okay, so now we're just going to look at how to create pretty maps to put in your reports that you already have your profile in. You can see here on the left and the Project Explorer and the grid we've got our gravity and our TMI grid. So double click on gravity to open it up here. What are we going to do now is we going to go map tools. New map, new map from XYZ. And this window comes up and you got her. Put in the minimum and maximum X and Y. But we're going to do it the easy way and just click here on. Interactive. You can see it's already registered what the coordinate system is. So click on interactive. And now we're going to click and drag the boxer and our region. And it's now changed the coordinates needed for minimum and max. We're going to click next map name again. I always click on the three dots to just check. It's going in the right place. Um, I'm going to click here. Map gravity. I've actually already got one. I'm existing. But I'm going to take out this G or D. So should see map underscore gravity. With the extension dot app click open. I'm sorry, I'm actually gonna add your TMR. Cause it's actually so much if easier. If you just put it all into one map. SO map underscore gravity underscore TMR dot map. You can change a few. Landscape or portrait. Different sizes. I'm just gonna keep it on this. Distance in meters. I'm not going to put it in a map scale. I'm going to click finish. Okay, and a blank screen opens up. Blank window. Now we're going to go map tools base map. Draw base map. So we actually going to put the coordinates on now. UM only thing to really change here is this one um. One means that there's a bit of a gap between the actual colored area and the outside of your coordinate system. Zero means it would take it away, oh. And the map would reach right to the edge where your coordinate numbers are listed. And I'm going to leave it at one for now. The only thing you need to change here, reference grid um. I'm going to click no. So I'm not going to use UT. M as my outside coordinates. I'm actually going to use lat long. So I don't want it. I put no here. Because I don't want UTM. But I go down here to add let long annotation. And I click either. Do you want crosses on the map where? Let long intersect your inducted lines. Solid lines. Or edge ticks. Only as what I prefer. And then what A? Are your increments? I'm not actually sure. I'm just going to put 0 0.1. 0 0.1 for now, um. And let's click next. Do you want to add a title? You can I told them do. But that's a beautiful dome. You could put your name there if you wanted. Often for company reports you do this, so you know who has done what. Click finish. OK, and you can see. It's probably too small the increments that I've done. So I'm going to go here. Map tools base map draw base map. So I'm just going to say follow the same process. I'm going to go here. Let's try 0 0.5, maybe it will be too big. And go next. Go finish OK. That's great. The main thing that you want is. You want at least two points. Because I'm having. 
in someone who's taken other people's maths from papers and tried to digitize, where profiles were collected, and it's very difficult to digitize. If you only have one X or one Y value, so if you okay about other people using work, make sure that at least there's two ticks on the side. And, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the gravity into here. So we click on this grid on the left hand side. So I click on it and drag it on top. Doesn't work, there we are. And do it with the TMI as well. Okay, let's click this Earth button. So we get a better perspective. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And again, you can drag down here. If you, if it's too far out the way. To look at the group manager tools. So it's telling you in the data section you got T, M1 and gravity. And then the coordinates. And your base. You got a title. And you click on it. It outlined it north. Surroundings is just the surrounding black line OK. I'm going to click on coordinate and again it's too small. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go edit this group. Right click. Select all right. Click text attributes. Going to change it again to three. Your choice if you want to leave it as italic. Click OK, you can see it's a lot easier to see now. And you actually need to do the same with your scale. Bar click on it in the left. Um, group manager tool here. Put your mouse on top. Right click. Edit this group. Right click. Select all right. Click text attributes. Then I also change it to three and click OK. Very important here is you can move this if you want. Maybe move it up a bit here. Never ever expand it to the right. To the left because then it obviously changes what your scale is um. And it doesn't adjust automatically. So it's a bit on top of each other here. So you can drag it down. Because that's not changing your actual scale itself. But never drag it right or left to expand it. You can even click on the title here if you want and but. Expanding it, it actually makes the text size bigger. Instead of having to go right click. I'm edit this group. And I can actually drag in my north arrow. Um, I'm actually going to drag my title on top here. And I'm going to get rid of my surroundings here, okay? So you can see. Um, if you take off the TMI, you've got gravity here. And, and you can toggle back and forth. And what we're seeing here is the edge of the kraton. And so what I'm going to plot now is I'm going to plot my the legend bar. So what did I do? I went to map tools. I go down here to symbols. And I go color legend bar. And I click on it. So you can't just put in a magnetic call gravity map. You actually got to tell them people what the value what the colors represent value was. So this first thing here, data layer. Let's choose gravity first title. It's going to be milligirl because those are my units. And it's your choice if you want a vertical or horizontal and I prefer horizontal. Um, you can click here on more. And it's going to tell you here. The text size and the length and um, height and width of your bar. 
Let's just try it first, cause it's much easier to come back and adjust it. Click on locate, and then you can actually click on the map where you want your thing you're. On color bar to be. But nothing happened. It just took you back here, but now it's remembered here. Where it should locate the color bar. I click OK. And you can see it's far too wide. So either you can go here in your group manager tool. And click on color bar. So that it's selected go back here right click. Click on color bar at the bottom. And it actually takes you right back here. And let's click on more. We're gonna adjust the width we're gonna make from for 2 2. We might have to come back. My tick size needs to be bigger. Um, let's click on OK. OK, that's bigger there. Take sizes to the problem. Let's go right click color bar. Maybe I was selecting the wrong thing more. Okay, that's probably what it is. So I'm guessing that sorry. I changed the title tick size. Subtitle tick size is actually. I actually want your label text size. And I'm not sure if they've got all these options. On the older version. Um, but you can try. So I'm just gonna change it there, click OK. And that's a little bit better. Okay, so that was for gravity. I'm gonna go back here. And do exactly the same for magnetics. Okay, so if I go up to the top here, go map tools symbols. Um, color legend bar. It's gonna kinda start me from scratch. I'm gonna have to adjust the location. I'm gonna have to adjust the size. So I think for now the easiest thing to do is click here on gravity again. So it's selected. Right click color bar. And what we gunner. So now it saved everything that we previously said. So it saved the width. And we've got our two. It saved the text size. But now I'm going to change this to magnetics. And I'm going to put in a title. Nana Tesla, and I'm going to click OK. OK, and you can see it has an over original gravity. It's just added a new one. So you can see there's gravity. And there's magnetics. So you just got to remember to toggle them on and off. According to which one is on your screen. Although okay. We should have probably done this afterwards but so now. In GSoft it always applies a non-linear color scale. Now let me tell you what that means. If you take your mask. Go up here to where it says a GGTMI. So that your TMI grid. Double click on it. This is the color tool. So this is the color bar that it's got. And this is how it's mapping it to the data. So you can see it's not a straight line. It's I'm exponential and so. I'm here. These valleys are the blue valleys in the middle. Yeah, the majority of the values I'm. Green, and then as we move up on the end here. This is the pink. Now, you can see there's not so many values on the end. Here, and so we giving them um pink. But it might be worthwhile to change the scale. So that we really. In the middle here, what it is saying. Sorry, is that. If you look at the bottom. It says minus 89. That is nano Teslin. If we scroll up, it's about minus 1013. 2 0 there. It goes up to 230. 
So it's telling you that in the middle here. We said about my minus 10 10 o'clock. That is where most of the data is. So there's only a little bit of the data here in the minus and there's only a little bit of the data here by 200. So we want to apply our colors in the region where the most data is. So what I'm going to do is about over here where it starts to rise up your Instagram. It's about minus 50. And over here it says about 130. So I'm going to ignore the few date at the bottom at the at the top. And I'm going to focus in this middle region with most of the date is. I'm going to click on this straight line. So it says use a linear distribution. And so currently these are the maximum and minimum values of our color bar. I'm going to change this. Ugh, now I can't even remember. I think we'll do minus 100 for now. I was up to 134. And you should try do a contour interval. Because it just gives you regular values. I'm going to use 5. It's moaning at me that I've chosen bad values. But that's fine. Adjust it automatically for you and I click OK. And now you can see your color will have changed in the back. And now I've got a straight line from here to here. In the region where there is the most data. So that just gives us a linear colors girl. That makes a bit more sense. Let's click OK. OK, and even our color scale here has changed them. And so on the screen here, it has blown up these regions that are most positives and negatives. But we're seeing a lot more of the detail in between. So if, for example, in this region I was looking for sills or ducks, minus one that have, have a much lower amplitude than this large anomaly here, representing three to four. Or this large anomaly representing the edge of the kraton. This would help me because I'd be focusing on on the smaller features. Although in this case, we actually do want to focus in on the bigger features. So it's your choice if you want to leave it as this. Otherwise, you might actually. Even though I told you not to, you might want to focus in on this larger region here. Because that's actually where a lot of the amplitude it's from you are normally are coming from. So this is from values of like 80. And we say it was up to 200 or 260. So let's just see what it would look like. Let's go 80 to 60. And go here. So everything else is going to be blues and maybe greens. And now it's going to look focusing on the high amplitude area and give us more variation in that area. Yeah. OK, so I mean. The only reason why we doing this is because this is our focus area is this high amplitude. Region, it does look a bit unusual. Maybe let's go back here and change it. From minus 100 to 255. Okay, it's moaning at us again. That's fine. Um, and maybe that's a bit more reasonable, so. Your choice how you want to do it. I mean, you really just want to focus in on your feature of importance. And but we are starting to see the two rooms. Of the creator here. So you can play around with your color bar. And just see what is best. So that was um. Magnetics, let's just take off magnetics. And put on our gravity. And take off the color. Scale color bar and put in gravity. Again, double click on the gravity. In the top left hand corner here and the group manager. Again, most of our data is down here. 
get over and this top region here. Some of the pinks are being mapped to data. That's probably not a lot of data points. So I want to focus in between this region of minus 160 and if I drag up along the colors, it's probably too. 108 so let's do that before I forget it. Minus 160 minus 108. Color interval of 5 click OK. You can see we've lost a lot of colors here, cause it's actually not mapping that much um. So if you don't I feel unhappy with this. You can click on this back area that says reset. Or you could even open up here and choose a different um color scale altogether. Um again because we want to be focusing in on this higher area. Maybe we should just keep the values up there. So let's click on linear. Um I'm actually just going to make this a whole number. So 107 and this I'm going to make minus 40. So I'm not actually cutting out anything now. Um, let's just see what it looks like. And click OK OK. So we're starting to lose a lot of background feature. And we're really focusing in on this Frederick Ford dome. So you can see where's I'm going to reset again. Before we thought, oh. It's kind of high everywhere. Where is this? As you start to adjust your color scale, um, you start to get a lot more detail. Um, in the feature itself. So you, you can see that actually, well, the high is a lot more in the middle here. So you can play around with the color scale, um. It's, it's a tough one. Because you got such large variations. You can see that your color. Scale here has become a lot smaller. U M just because we've limited. U H R range. That's fine. I'm going to right click. Uh. You can see I moved it around. Here to get it back in the middle. Now that it's selected. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go color bar. And I'm actually going to just go down to more. And I'm actually going to take out decimal places. So this label decimal, it's got one decimal place. It's really not necessary. In this case, I'm going to change it to zero. And again, I'm actually going to change these text size two for for the labels. And this click OK. OK, it's a lot easier to see now. So when you put this in a report, you really want people to see your values. And let's do the same for the magnetic one over here. I've clicked on it. I'm going to click here color bar. It's going to come up and more. I'm going to take away the number of decimal places and I'm going to make the text labels. Bigger so I can see them. Click OK much easier. Now that we don't have the decimal places. So you can just play around with this. And see what color bar best. And brings out the features on your map. And so once you've done that. I would say let's zoom into the full extent. So let's go up here to the zoom in. Box and magnifying glass. Draw it around the outside. Click one more time. Okay, so now I'm just trying to fill the full map extent. Um, this is my lazy way of doing it. So I've really just just showing the outs. The whole map on my map area. Sorry, in my map. And yeah. the reason I'm doing this is cause when I go map. Export the export is a JP. Now that I've said viewed region to export it really. I'm going to have minimal work having to crop this image. 
because it's really just going to show me this region of the map. It's just going to export this region of the map. Resolution of 150 is fine, and you might have to increase this to 300 if you're doing it for publication. Just see sorry. Click OKM. Again, let's do Fred. I'm going to call it Fred of Fort. I'm going to call it that. Come on!